Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Big marketing con, webinar con 2023. Post lunch, hands together for Eddie Maloof. Here we go. What's up, everyone? All right, listen, there's two ways this presentation is going to go. I've been watching you guys for two days. This is a very awful crowd, okay? There's two ways, there's two ways we're going to run this. I'm very direct. You'll find this out quickly. Way number one is I engage with you guys. We ask questions back and forth. I have a few cool prizes inside of my presentation. That's way number one, but I need your energy back. Way number two is I ignore you guys are here, and I shoot this as if it's a YouTube video, and it's going to be posted later, and I pretend there's not even a crowd here. Which way do you guys want? Way number one or way number two? Okay, okay. I just want to make sure we're on the same page here. Let's see. Can I get the slides up on the screen? Oh. Great, so let me give you my title first. How we went from 2x to a 6x return on paid ads without touching an ad account. That's the cool part about this. Uh, I think a lot of times, it's funny, I, uh, in all my group chats, people intro me, they're like, Eddie, best media buyer ever, and I always get mad at them, like, do not box me into this media buyer square. Most of the time, what we do is not even in the ad account. The magic usually happens outside the ad account. I just wanna be clear that we tripled this business without even touching that. So, now, I'm gonna move pretty quickly. This, this is serious, I'm not, I'm not I'm not doing this just to kind of keep you guys' attention. I'm gonna move very fast. I have like 85 slides. I'm gonna move very quick. If you guys lose me for like two minutes, you're fucked. It's over. There's no way you're gonna catch back up. I'm not even kidding. This is like webinar style shit right here, okay? So I'm gonna move very quick. I need you guys to keep pace. Here's how I structure my presentation just to give you how it's gonna go. First of all, I'm gonna change your mentality about a webinar, okay? I'm gonna spend the first third kind of breaking down how you think about webinars and change your mentality a little bit on them. In the middle, I'm gonna get a little tactical, show you the actual flow chart of how we run ours, exactly all the things that matter. I'll open it up for Q&A in the middle of my presentation, kind of different than how normal people do. I'll take a couple questions just in case. It's a little bit technical. Uh, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you guys a few bonuses of a couple like tactical strategies that we use uh, that I think could give you guys a few percentage points of lift across the board. Sound good? Sound good? I like this, there you go, we're getting better. So if you are not paying full attention, you will get lost and you will not be able to catch up, that is a fact. So I'm gonna tell you about the current business, so I can't say the name, I can't break too much down, I'm gonna tell you the current business that I'm gonna talk about, and I'm gonna show you all the changes we made to take it from a 2X to a 6X. So current business, most of you guys kinda have businesses like this, you run ads to a VSL call funnel, it goes to a sales team, you sell like a mid to high ticket product, five to 10K, this is what the business was doing. And then once a quarter, we were doing a live event, okay? So once a quarter, we'd have a bunch of people fly into a city, huge room, 500 to 1,000 people. Uh, same as usual, you know, two days of content, we pitch from stage. Uh, our average revenue per attendee that was not already a customer of ours was $2,000, okay? This is an important metric as we build this conversation together, you'll understand why. So here's some actual metrics. Team before us was spending about 200K a month to make 400K a month, 2X return on the VSL. So 200K net there, minus commissions. And the quarterly event, they were spending about $200,000 on ads. They were getting about 240 people to show up in the room. Those 240 people that were new customers in the room were paying them $2,000 per head. Revenue is what they ended up making when they pitched from the back of the room. So 400K was being, 480K was being made. So every quarter, this business was making 900K gross profit, 300 grand a month. Can you raise your hand if you're cool making 300 grand a month profit? Yes, raise your hand. Awesome, I love how rich this room is. No one wants to raise their hand for 300 grand a month. That's the good news because I'm about to show you how we changed this number completely to about a 4X of what it is now. So I'm gonna show you how we took this quarterly profit from 900K a quarter to $4 million a quarter without touching a single thing in the ad account uh, and leaving the same exact ad spend. So first thing I wanted to solve was, hey, listen, we're selling all this stuff through a sales team. When you sell through a sales team, you guys know if you work with a sales agency, uh, 20 to 22% off the top is what's gonna come off, right? So I'm like, if I could just be able to sell a $5,000 product and eliminate my sales team, then I would save 22% off the top, which to the bottom line, substantial, substantial difference. So that's the first problem I wanted to solve. So can anyone raise their hand if they're actually able to sell a $5,000 product on a webinar without a sales team, no sales team, cash collected. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six people in this room are able to do this. That's fucking phenomenal. Uh, are you guys doing it at, at least 100 purchases a month? No, that's what I thought. Uh, I'm gonna show you how we do this, okay? 
There's a psychology here. There's a couple things. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Raise your hand if you run a webinar. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up, please. I'm going to, I'm going to do some math here in the room. Why don't you guys just run VSLs to a checkout page instead of a webinar? Why is a webinar better than doing a VSL straight to cart? Can you guys just answer out loud? What is it? Higher price. Why higher price, though? Longer interaction. OK, longer time is longer engagement, I think, is what you're getting at. Locked in environment, OK. That's what I want to hear. So, so what's the objection? If, if we want more engagement, more time, what's the objection of doing a five-hour webinar? Lose attention, people will probably die by the time it's over. <laughs> Batteries will die on the laptop, on the phones. Totally agree with you, it's a horrible idea, right? Uh, yet somehow, uh, Rowell over there in the back of the room, Growth Only Coaching, put your hand up. We spent 25K on a webinar, pulled out 420 grand uh, because it was a five hour webinar. Um, but I'm not gonna show you today how to run a five hour webinar. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of break some molding of psychology. What if I told you that I will get the same amount of people you show up to your hour long, two hour webinar, I'll deduct 15% of people from that, but they're guaranteed to stay for five hours. Would you rather have that or would you rather have your current webinar? Does that make sense? Which one would you rather have, this or that? Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, cool. So, here's the psychology. We decided to do a free challenge. You guys have heard of challenges? Yes, yes, yes. Everyone's like rolling their eyes now. Okay, how many of you guys do a challenge actively every single month? Raise your hand. There's like two, three of you guys in the room, four, four or five max, okay? I'm gonna show you today how we changed this entire business. I scrapped the entire VSL. I scrapped sell, running ads to the actual challenge, and I did, uh, to the actual live event, sorry. And I ran all the ads to a monthly challenge every single month, all virtual. We created a 5K product. I'm gonna show you what it takes to create a 5K product that you can sell on a challenge every single month without a sales team and sell hundreds of them every single month. Um, and now I'm gonna show you how this changed the entire business. I'm gonna show you the actual economics. So, Number one, we needed to sell to beginners. Number two, I needed to sell it for 5K on a challenge without a sales team. And number three, I had to fill up an event later on, once a quarter, with at least 1,000 people who were paid sitting in seats. So I have a lot of objections here that I need to crush. But there are four main objections that actually matter. As I sat down, as we build offers virtually every single week, we build a new offer at this point. Uh, most of these offers scale to seven figures a month. Uh, I kind of broke down, like if we're gonna go broad market to, this is biz op space, if we're gonna go broad market to people who are new, what are the things that I have to crush objection wise so that they never have to talk to a sales team and that someone who's new who's never heard of me, cold traffic a week ago, can get on and swipe their card for five grand for me. So number one is future risk of loss. I need you guys to write these down. This is gonna be super important and you're gonna look at your offer and you're gonna find the things that are missing out of these four if you change it, I promise you your offer will convert significantly more. So the price of the program is one thing, but the money that someone has to spend after the program to either make the money, fix their health, whatever it is, is a whole other cost that we're not accounting for as an objection when we pitch our products. I'll give you an example. Someone wants to do an Amazon private label. They'll sell a course for five grand, but guess what? The person gets in, they have to spend another 10 buying product, doing product research, doing all these other things. That is a cost to the consumer, and that is actually one of the biggest objections that they have. Because not only is it more money that they need, but it's also more risk of loss on top of the actual program itself. If I could create the program where my offer is the whole risk, the whole risk is them not actually doing it, and there's no financial risk after that, it'll be a lot easier for me to sell. So again, example, I can't have a 5K course and then someone else spend another 5K. It needs to be proportional. If I'm selling a 5K course, they need to be able to spend a couple hundred bucks a month to make money using the method that I'm teaching. So that was number one. Number two is the time actually required to do it. If I'm going to broad market and I'm trying to sell a 5K course to someone who's never heard of me, to someone who's never heard of this method, the first thing that they're gonna think in their head is the security that they have with their current job and their current income. It can't be something that's full time out the gate, it needs to be something that allows them to keep that security. So time required to do it cannot be full time. So this is another objection we had to crush. Unfortunately due to NDAs, I can't share the exact offer, but I tried as much as I can to show you the four things that are super important that we crushed. Um, that was able to allow us to do this. Number three is time to dollar. So how quickly can someone actually get back their first dollar? It doesn't need to be the $5,000 of their course. It needs to be the first dollar. It needs to be that belief, that money hit my account. Whatever this thing that I'm doing is, it works. It could be 100 bucks, it could be 50 bucks, it could be $10. As long as they see that, wait, this is actually a way I can generate money, that false belief is gone that they can't do it. And so we need to find something where someone could start making money immediately. So is it something that'll take the months? 
because it needs to be days or weeks max for them to make their first dollar. Again, I'm not saying for them to make an ROI. I'm saying their first dollar. This is a very important belief for someone, especially cold traffic here. A lot of you guys do JVs. You do affiliate list uh, promotions to each other. That's a whole other world. You guys are sharing trust. I'm targeting people who have never heard of this person. They've never seen this person's face. We exclude everyone who's even seen or interacted with this person. This is like the coldest pitch possible, okay? Uh, and we're convincing people to spend five grand. And the last one is the amount of experience required to do this, okay? It needs to be zero. Whatever you're teaching, you need to be able to teach it to someone who knows absolutely nothing about it, and your course, your coaching, whatever it is that you're selling, needs to provide enough information for them to be able to do it on their own. Uh, and I need to be able to convince them 100% that they can do it without experience. And I need to do it in two days' time because that's when I'm going to be pitching on my challenge. I'll get to that in a bit once I get to the technical side. So these are the four things. Future risk of loss, time required, time to dollar, and experience earned. And here is what you guys are doing wrong as I evaluate offers, multiple offers every single week. Most of you guys, if you're making a 5K offer, are making an offer that's only good enough to buy if you add bonuses to it. Okay, I want you to re really reflect on your offers. I know someone earlier was talking about bonuses, offer stacking, all these things. And I think over time, we forgot that they're called bonuses. They're not called an extension of the offer, okay? And so what happens is a lot of you guys, what you're doing is you're making an offer and then you're adding some really sick bonuses. You're leaving the best bonuses at the end. You're getting so strategic about where you're placing the bonuses. But really, it's a part of your offer. You're just positioning them as a bonus. I think if you change your framework and you say, how can I make my offer so good that people will just buy it for five grand, as an example, and the bonus is actually a bonus, I can increase my conversion rates dramatically. So when we built our offer, we wanted it to be able to stand alone without any bonuses and people would buy it. And so if I added just one bonus, it was enough to take people over the edge. I do this, and I'll show you the metrics at the end. I don't offer stack anything. I show them on one slide what is actually in the offer, and then I show them on one slide what is the bonus that they're getting, and that's it. I don't need to offer stack. I don't need to create any fake FOMO. I'll show you how I create real FOMO, but that's because the offer is so good that the bonus I just need one of them. I don't need to stack this. So I only have one bonus. I don't even need to offer stack. I'll give 200 bucks to the first person who can guess what the bonus is based on what I've showed you so far. There's a few problems I told you at the beginning i got to solve. What's my bonus that I'm going to put in here? Can someone guess? Attend the event. Who said it? Great. I'll give you 200 bucks after this. Just remind me, please. So I need to fill up an event every quarter. I don't want to spend ads on an event. So the best way for me to fill out this event is to add the tickets as a bonus to this product. For reference, this product is a $5,000 product. Our fulfillment cost is only 600 bucks on it. So I can easily stack two tickets, get people in the room for free. I don't have to spend any money on it. So now I actually am giving them the event tickets, which we normally sell for $1,000. I'm giving them two of these as a bonus on top of the offer. So the offer's already good enough. I, I've, I've now created the offer. I've crushed all the objections that I need to go to cold market for 5K. And then I've bonus on top of them the two tickets that they perceive of a value of $2,000 or more. But really what I've done is I've solved my entire problem on the back end of losing money to acquire a customer to come sit in a ticket uh, in, in the live event. So I used to lose money to sell an event. Now I can make all my cash up front while actually giving people tickets, positioning it as a strong bonus. I only have one. There's not a million bonuses to focus on. This is what you get, and you get it only if you sign up now. So now I've created an offer I can sell for 5K, eliminated sales team commissions, and I got a way to push my event tickets. So, with that being said, here's what our challenge looks like. So this is kind of like a rough drawing. It gets a little bit more technical than this, but I want to kind of make it easy for everyone to understand. Some people do five-day challenges. Some people do seven-day challenges. I do three-day challenges. Uh, I think it's just a lot less risk of drop-off, a lot less risk of the person who's doing the challenge messing something up and putting us in a bad position where we have massive fall-off. Uh, so it's essentially a three-day challenge. So for this example, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday would be day one. We basically send sequences the day of. Uh, as soon as the event is done, uh, we give homework on day one. And just think back to what I said. I said, my goal is that by the second day, my audience is 100% confident that they can do the thing that I'm about to sell them that they should be doing, okay? So by the end of the second day, I need them to feel like they've taken steps towards it. If someone's gonna go and sign up for a 90-day workout plan and I need to sell them by day two, 
by day two, they need to be sore. They need to be feel healthier. They need to feel cleaner. They need to feel like they got rid of junk food. I need to have them making progress to feel like that thing is actually achievable and attainable. So day one, I'm delivering content. I'm giving them homework for day two. And day two, I'm bringing them on. I'm delivering more content. This is kind of like the meats and potatoes of it all. I'm basically showing them a live demonstration of whatever it is that I'm about to sell them on, actually working with me to do. I'm gonna show them how easy it is and that by the end of the second day, at this point we spent three to four hours together, uh, I'm essentially gonna go pitch them at the end of this. Um, something that we do that's not on this chart, that's a pretty cool way to liquidate, uh, is we'll, sell, we'll give people the option to sign up for free or to buy a $97 VIP ticket. The VIP ticket will have its own perks, so like for example, after every day, it'll be like a one-on-one -on -one training with the person who's hosting it. Uh, we'll do something before the event, we'll do something after the event. There's a million ways you can spin it. On average, about 25% of our ad spend gets liquidated on the front from the $97. So if we spend 100K for a challenge, we'll get 25 grand back uh, before we've even sold anything on the $97. Pretty cool way just to liquidate spend. Um, and what I calculated was about 40% of the people that go through this funnel who buy VIP end up transacting at, uh, at $5,000 at the end. So it's a pretty significant amount of people that buy that. It's an indicator, uh, it's usually a leading indicator that they're gonna end up purchasing. Uh, and then this is the key. So back to FOMO, back to all this FTC stuff. Greg's gonna talk to us later today or tomorrow about all this FTC compliance. You can't fake FOMO, you can't fake create a timer that things are gonna run out, all this stuff. So what I do to make it easy, and I think at this point, like, our, our people that are attending these are pretty conditioned to figure out like if we're lying or not about something expiring, right? If it's digital, everyone just kind of assumes, okay, worst case, I talk to a sales guy and then he gives me that, that price if I really want it and they want me to buy it, right? So what I do is right after the third day of the event, which is when I pitch again, so I pitch day two, I pitch day three, I'm basically creating a 90 minute event that's only for people who purchase. This is a live event. Uh, it's usually like a kickoff training. So whatever it is that I'm selling them to learn, I'm kickstarting them right there. Hey, 90 minutes, we're getting on one-on-one. -on -one. I'm walking you through the next steps you need to do so that going into the weekend and next week, you can go and start getting your own deals done. You can go and make some money. You can go whatever it is that you guys are selling. This is the thing that if you miss this, you will already be a couple steps behind. And so the pressure is always there for someone to transact on the third day, whether they like it or not. They can wait the next day for the cart close sequence and the emails. They can do all the stuff that all you guys already do, but they will never be able to get this call back. It's not recorded. They'll never see it again. If they don't attend live, there's no chance. And so what happens is like, let's say I'm the main presenter. As soon as the time's up, I will move to that VIP call, that purchaser call. Everyone's now jumping to that call. All the people that are still left in the call, I have someone else from the team, a staff member come and answer Q&A for anyone that's left there. And we're squeezing people into that post-purchase call because there is no other time to do it. Does that make sense? Yes? Awesome, cool. Next step of this, if you remember what Abdul was doing, uh, is the onboarding call. So basically everyone that actually signs up, a few people in this room do this really well. Will Rivera does this really well too. Uh, basically, they buy the challenge and then they get an onboarding call with a sales rep. That sales rep is essentially upselling them now into the other programs. So how we do it is we have 8K programs, 10K programs, 20K programs. We credit them every dollar they've spent. So if they spent 5K on this offer, I'll credit them the 5K on that call right there on the spot. So if you wanna buy our 10K course, you only pay the 5K spread. If you wanna buy an 8K course, you only pay the 3K spread. This is the only time ever that you can do it. It's on that call. I know they don't pressure sell. We pressure sell. I don't care. I'm giving them the spread right there. It's a $5,000 credit. You can take it or leave it. It's up to you. But it's a pretty hard offer to turn down, especially as you see that the other products fulfill a completely different way to make money. And so it's, it's very easy for them to buy something at like a 70% discount because they've already spent that money. So here's what our numbers look like now. We spend about 250K a month on a challenge. We pull out 800K in revenue. Uh, it's about 600K on day, day two and about 200K on day three when we pitch the second time. And uh, here's how we squeeze more juice. Like I said, our sales team basically texts, uh, basically get on calls to upsell people and then they also text all the attendees who did not buy and they try to set up a sales call with them and then they can get full commission for closing those deals. So anyone that actually attended, we'll pull a tag. Uh, we'll tag everyone that actually attended but didn't buy. Um, as long as the cart sequence has closed, so it's usually about three days after the event, the sales team has full access to go call everyone, try to get them on a call and actually squeeze more juice out of them. This makes us another 200 grand over the next 30 day window uh, just from this offer. So they're able to squeeze out another 
what's that, 40 purchases essentially uh, from the list just by getting them on sales calls. So now we're about 250K ad spend, $1 million of revenue every single month on this challenge. And if you take it on a quarterly basis, we're looking at about 750K of ad spend, $3 million of revenue. Uh, this number fluctuates up and down about 100 grand on revenue per quarter, uh, just being transparent, but I'm trying to give you like a pretty good layout of the land because these numbers are exactly kind of where they're at. Uh, and we sold 600 event tickets. Every single person that comes, they get an event ticket, right? So not only have I generated more revenue by doing the challenge instead of depending on the sales team, but now I'm generating 600 net new customer event tickets to my event. So these people, I have 600 people now that are gonna show up every quarter to my event that I do not have to spend any ad dollars on, that I used to, well they used to, spend money to get these people at a loss just to try to sell them in the room. So don't forget, Every challenge, we get about 15,000 registrants. Across a quarter, we have 45,000 new leads for the sales team. So sales team gets to sell another 400 tickets by themselves to a list of 45,000 people, most of them non-buyers, right? So it's very easy to then get them in the room because we get pretty popular speakers for these events. Sales team's always been used to closing 400 deals by themselves. They just didn't have a marketing system to close the gap to 1,000. So now I've closed the gap to 1,000. We have 1,000 event tickets every single quarter. And after the math is all said and done, we spend 750K on ad spend, we make $3 million of direct revenue, we get 1,000 tickets, and in the event, we basically pitch. On average, a net new customer makes us $2,000 at the event. We've ran five of these events, we know the numbers inside out. That number is solid. $5 million of revenue on 750K of ad spend. We're now to 6.67 ROAS. All I did, I didn't touch an ad account, I didn't touch anything, I just changed the method of how things are being sold and how we're pitching them. And this does not account for the fact that I saved 20% on sales commission the entire process. So that's kind of the math there. From a monthly profit per, per, per month, we went from 300K to $1.4 million per month gross profit. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? Um, so just because it's a triple ROAS, it doesn't mean it's a triple profit. It's almost a 5X on the actual gross profit of the business. Um, and we built this whole system in like, a 60 day period of working with this person. So pretty cool. Uh, now show you some cool tactical bonus tips that we do to help us with some of these show rates and close rates and things like that. So uh, number one, we, we just started doing this right now because we had a show rate problem on uh, someone else, not this, but we basically split our audiences tagged by time zones. So we'll basically now target people in Eastern, Central, Mountain, Pacific, all separately essentially. And we're tagging them to figure out when these people are showing and what percentage of these people are closing, because we noticed show rates kind of dropped the last month across the board, and so uh, we're trying to figure out if it's a time issue. So, for example, one of our clients, we basically figured out, like, most of the people attending were on the East Coast, this client was on the West Coast, we moved the, uh, the challenge, in his case, uh, an hour and a half up, so later in the day, uh, and then all of a sudden our attendance spiked on the West Coast side of things. So, I think sometimes we just blanket target, like, United States, and we're like, okay, cool, everyone in America, they're all the same, right? Everyone who has money above a certain point, who's in this demographic, lives in the United States. But there's a three hour time zone difference between these people's lives. And so I think it's very important to test that for your show rate. Uh, someone in this room uh, also does this, uh, but they do like a challenge and they'll do, everyone runs ads to the East Coast for this one challenge and then the next challenge is everyone to the West Coast. Um, so something pretty cool, important, doesn't take a lot of effort that you can do, I think that'll help you. Bonus tip number two, uh, Put a QR code on your closing and Q&A slide. We were just talking about this yesterday, or today, uh, no, yesterday. And we are saying like how many people actually scanned the QR code versus click the link, uh, and how many of those actually resulted in sales. A lot of times, especially in like longer things like challenges, stuff like this, people put them on, your, on their computer, they're walking around, sometimes they're just listening to the audio, they're not fully engaged in front of it. Uh, it's very easy to just put a QR code on there. If the chat breaks, if anything breaks, that is always a kind of a fail safe option. And then something uh, that's super important that I don't see a lot of people doing is a uh, very easy, obvious thing. I'm surprised most people don't, but buy a great domain that's like super easy to remember and make that your checkout page. So we do Pace Morby's Gator Method. Uh, if you don't know what that is, we basically scaled it from zero to uh, over $3 million a month in uh, six months. Uh, pretty cool offer. Uh, but any, a great example domain would be chompchomp.com. It's like funny, it's about gators, easy to remember. A lot of you guys put this domain, it's like slash checkout, slash cart, slash offer one, slash click funnels. Like, just get rid of that shit. Make it super easy. Uh, if someone gets off the webinar or off the challenge, they'll still remember the domain. 
uh, and it'll be very easy for them to recall that. So you want to make it as easy as possible. <sighs> Tip number three, like I said, create a purchaser only event. This is the best form of FOMO we've ever created. Like this is what gets people to buy on the spot. We don't even put a timer on the screen. We don't say anything. We just say that thing is starting at 6 p.m. sharp. No questions asked, five minutes left, whatever it is, cool, we're jumping to the call. You'll notice like the last 10 minutes, boom, 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 boom. Bunch of purchases come through because everyone doesn't want to miss out on that purchasers only event. It's so valuable, it's free, it costs an extra hour and a half of your time uh, and it squeezes people into that. So something very important. I'd rather have cash today uh, than sit here and depending on my email sequence to do it for me over the next three days. Um, bonus tip number four, There's I think there's two more. So uh, more sophisticated audience, this is really cool. Uh, I bet none of you guys have done this. So more sophisticated audiences might not want to watch a 90-minute webinar or six hours of challenge time, okay? These people are busy. Uh, they want to get more right to the point, but they're also, because they're more sophisticated, they're usually more financially sophisticated. Uh, they have money. Their time is worth more money. Uh, and so what we did was we basically turned one of our webinars into a text page. So we just literally turned the entire webinar into a long-form sales page. Uh, and what we did was basically we retargeted people who wouldn't attend the webinar and wouldn't attend the replay. We targeted them with this long form sales page where we walked through pretty much everything that we normally had in the webinar. The text was big and bold on certain headlines to make it easy to skim. And we basically crushed all their objections. And that page alone gave us a 5% lift on total sales every single month, that page. Like think about 5% of people additional buying just from literally reading it instead of watching it. They want to get through your webinar in maybe 15, 20 minutes reading it, and that's their thing. They want to do it on the go. They want to do it wherever they are. They don't have the time to sit there and watch it. Um, and you're not addressing these people because you're forcing everyone to watch a two-hour webinar or a six-hour challenge, whatever it is, to get to the pitch. And they've already opted in. They're already in your list. You've already paid for them. It makes no sense just to let them go. Uh, so I think that's really cool. And then bonus number five, a lot of you guys are in Onyx Board of Experts group, so you've seen this before. I think it's uh, one of our coolest things that we came up with. No one else was doing this. Um, don't sleep on failed payments. So basically the story is one day I logged into Stripe. I saw this giant orange bar on the left. I was like, what the fuck is that? So I like floated my mouse over and it was failed payments. It was millions of dollars. I'm like, no, 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 no. Then uh, something's wrong here. We got to fix this. So uh, two things, that, two ways that we fix this. If you have a sales team, uh, you can just have your sales team call people who actually have failed payments. You can activate an automation, go to like a Slack channel. Uh, ping the sales team, let them know this person's payment failed, uh, and then your sales team can actually reach out to failed payments. Those are the best people you're just cleaning up. Like, they tried to pay, their bank declined it, something happened, whatever the case is. Very easy to just have a conversation, get that across the board. It's more like customer support than sales even. Example number two, you can take a photo of this. Here's an example we do for Pace Morby. I think it's incredible. We basically fake a forwarded email from Pace. Um, so we basically, you can see at the bottom, read it from the top, or from the bottom up. Uh, at the bottom it says, from Pace Morby to Travis, team member. Subject, uh, I'll use Eddie as an example. Can you help me take care of Eddie? Question mark. Hey Travis, just been going over the attendee list. I noticed there was a problem processing Eddie's payment. Can you contact them, make sure we've done everything possible to get them in the program? It'd be a shame, blah, 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 blah. And it's a forwarded email. And then the top half is Travis's email to that potential prospect, so it'd be, in this case, hey, it's Travis from Pace Morby's team. Pace personally dropped me this note to touch base with you about getting you access, seems there was a problem, blah, 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 blah. Click here, or just respond if you need help with anything. This is amazing, okay? Back to like personal touch, someone was talking about that yesterday. This makes it feel like the person who just had thousands of people on their webinar, remembered your name specifically, saw your name in the failed payment list, and said, I wanna make, I wanna go help that person make this happen. This is all automated. This is all in the automations process. You just take the person's first name. You take that their payment was failed in Stripe. You apply the tag when it happens. As long as like in the next 20 minutes, an actual successful payment doesn't happen, it'll trigger this email on Monday. So for me, like this challenge ends on Saturday. Monday, they'll get the email. So he's back at work now. He's checking all his emails and he finds out that Eddie's payment failed. Uh, this cleans up. This just processes payments. Uh, Monday, Tuesday by itself without any sales team, without any commission, without any squeeze card sequences. This is just free money that's sitting on the table that all of us are overlooking because uh, we're trying to get more people to buy rather than looking at the people who buy and their stuff didn't go through. Do we have any questions? Yes, no? Do I take hands or do I let people walk to the mic? What's the, I'll, I'll just let you guys walk to the mic. Yeah, go ahead.
Um, great presentation. Uh, can you run the numbers of the challenge, like from the number of attendees all the way down to show-ups, number of closes, like percentages? Uh, meet me in the back, because I have them on my laptop. OK. Yeah, but I'd say like uh, rough, rough percentage is uh, like day one, we'll get like a 20 to 25% show rate. On a really good person, we'll get like 30 plus. Uh, day two, it'll decrease about 15%. Day three, it'll decrease 15% again. Uh, okay. If you want the exact close rates for this one, I can pull them up on a spreadsheet for you in the back. Cool, man. Yep. Hi, bro. Can hey. you hear me? Yep. It was a great presentation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question to you is like, uh, while we are doing a three days challenge or like a five days challenge, right? Like where we would have or told them about what we do, our offer, everything, by the day four or day five, we are going to tell them exactly how we can help them out. Do we need like a sales closer or like we alone can do all the sales, right? Like why do we need like a closer after the five days challenge if we can do ourselves like the closing? Um, so you can close on your webinar, you can close on your challenge. Uh, but I assume you don't have time to get on calls with hundreds of people. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and so that's what you need the sales team for. So, like, it's just added layers, right? It's just squeezing more juice out of the same orange. Like, I can pitch day two. I can pitch day three. I squeeze whatever I can out of my people. We do a, a cart abandon sequence at the end. We squeeze more people. The cart closes. Like, we can squeeze as much as we can, but there's another level of squeeze that we can't control that needs to be manually done, which is the sales team actually outbounding these people, getting them on calls, and trying to close them in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Because you're closing in a group environment, then you're closing in an email environment, which is on their phone. <clears throat> you're, it's not really one-on-one, -on -one, and some people just need like a little bit more to make them purchase, and so that's why it's important. Again, it's all ROI, right? You're paying your sales team commission, and then they're closing people. They're basically getting paid for whatever they close. So it should have no effect on you. As long as you get good closers and you have volume, it should be able to add a ton of money to your business. Absolutely. And second question is like, which uh, thing performs better, like VSL or like uh, the challenges? Like, from my presentation, what do you think perform better in this? I think the ch challenges. Yep. Thank right you. on point. Yep. What's up? Have you tested a split tested a 10k offer using the same process? Uh, I've sold a 20 and 40k offer with the same process, but not closing on the webinar. I, I basically do the challenge, and then I basically take a deposit of 500 bucks to 1,000 bucks. That lets them book a call. They get on with the sales team. Sales team tries to close them. I only pitch the 20K, just for reference. I pitch the 20K. I don't pitch the 40 because it's a little overwhelming. I pitch the 20K. They get on a sales call. Sales team tries to pitch them on the 40K based on their needs. If not, they pitch them on the 20K. Uh, and we give them a refund only if they decline for funding. So, like... There's no, this is a non-refundable deposit, but just to make it safe for you, like we'll refund you if you don't do that. In some cases, we don't do a refund. We just apply it as a credit to like a thousand dollar course that we have that could help them out. Thank you. Yep. What was the price of the VIP in the challenge? Uh, so we've tested a bunch of price points. We test between 97 and 297. What works for best, best for us across the board is $97. Uh, we liquidate about a quarter of our ad spend. Okay. Uh, and that's enough for us. Just based on the number, it's kind of free money and just lowers our risk on the front end. But at this point, we know our numbers and we could run the whole thing free without VIP and we'd be fine. But I, I, like I said, about 40% of VIP tickets actually end up taking the $5,000 offer. And when I ran like the proportion, like obviously way less people bought VIP than free people, but the VIP people were the majority of the purchases at the end. So the more I can get someone to just give me like a micro commitment, it makes them a lot more comfortable spending with me again. Because they'll spend 97 bucks, yeah. I'll bring more value than the 97, then automatically when I'm pitching them the 5K, it's a little bit more trust that I'm gonna bring more value than the 5K. And then for the 5K upsell, what's the fulfillment window? Is it like 90 days you're fulfilling them, six months, a year? Uh, so those programs depend on which one it is. The 8K program is uh, six months, the 10K program is six months, and then they have a year-long program which is 20 grand. And then so, what are you guys selling at the quarterly events? Is it one product or multiple products? Yeah, so it's one 30K product is what we're selling. All right, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, how long is the follow-up sequence for the cart close after the three days? Like three days again. Okay. Yeah, 72. I don't, I don't like to stick it too long. Onyx has like a 764-day <laughs> sequence. You know what I mean? And I run the replay, then I split it into three replays, then I split it into seven replays. Then I turn it into micro content on TikTok, and then I don't do that. I'm just three days out. Let's focus on the next one. Okay, cool. And then 
the kind of format for the content, day one, can you talk about what you talk about before you give them the homework? Yeah, um, I'll give you a rough summary, and then if you want, just talk to me, and I'll kind of show you an actual outline on a doc. Um, but so basically, day one, I'm uh, introducing them to myself like you do in a normal webinar. I'm telling them kind of the background story. I'm drawing out the picture of what we're going to cover the next three days. Uh, I always dangle like a really strong carrot on day three because I know I'm pitching on day two, and I need people to still come back for day three that don't buy. Uh, so I put my strongest thing on day three, right? So it would be like... Um, day one, two would be like content heavy, like let's say, I'll give an example if I have like an Amazon wholesale offer or Amazon private label offer, right? Day three would be like, I'm gonna show you, uh, day one and two, I'm gonna show you how to set it up, and day three, I'm gonna show you like the two ways that I grow it without spending any more money, et cetera. I make it like this thing that they have to show up for on day three, but day three is useless if they don't show up on day one and two. So day one, intro, I usually have like one or two random guest speakers uh, who are in that field who can kind of build some credibility. It's worth paying them if you have to. Uh, it's not necessary to have them. I've done a lot of challenges without guest speakers. Day one content, story. Uh, I basically then break down what day two is gonna look like. So day one, I'm selling them on the concept that this thing that we're learning about is actually like revolutionary. It's like, it's something that you're not used to. It's, I'm basically breaking the mold of their mindset day one, uh, but also giving value enough where it's not just a bunch of fluff and they feel like, okay, I have to show up for day two. The homework for day two is usually something that can like get them one step closer to being like, okay, I'm, I'm almost set up on this thing or I am set up on this thing, whatever it is. You can even just have them set up an LLC as an example. Uh, then day two, I get into like actual content. I'm screen sharing. I'm showing them like technical stuff. Like here's how I do this. Let's all make a login for this. Whatever it is that you're teaching them. Like if you're teaching them blogging day two, I would like go actually write a blog with AI, then show them how to post it and then like Look, in under an hour from scratch, we made a new account, we posted a blog, like, this is doable. And then you want them to feel like that sense of security, like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Like, I could do that every day. Like, that's super easy. Uh, and then that kind of leads into a pitch. Uh, as you have a product with more testimonials, your close rate will go up. Because uh, every day I'll bring up a student. And it's always a student who signed up at another challenge. So it'll always be like, oh yeah, I was in, I, w I attended one of these in October. And since then I've done three deals and I've made $10,000 for myself. Uh, FTC don't listen, but like you get the point. It's a testimonial of someone who is exactly in their shoes. Like I was in one of these a month ago and since then till now I've achieved these things. Uh, and so it gives people a lot more sense of trust. And then day three, I'm basically showing them kind of like a recap of how it is, showing them those two, three things that I were super secretive that I left for that day. Uh, and then I'm closing it again and I'm using the pressure of the fact that I have that post-purchase call. Sweet, thank you. Yep. That's super helpful. Thank you. And last question. Um, does this work for higher, t have you seen this work uh, with any of your clients that you've had for higher tickets, saying more like a thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 tickets? Yeah, so as I was telling him earlier, like I would, I would basically position this where you sell the $30,000 ticket, as an example, uh, on the call at the end, that's your pitch. Uh, I would probably pitch on day three, not day two, just to kind of build more time. Same reason why everyone was cool with having, you know, wanted more time on a webinar. I would try to maximize my time with them, maximize the value I give. And then I would have them do like some sort of paid deposit to book a call. So you book a call, talk to the sales team. Sales team works with the funding partners or whatever it is to try to get those people out. Uh, we do pretty well on those, honestly. Um, I just, again, you're dealing with the volatility of your sales team. So like I, I did this for another challenge, same thing, uh, 20K offer, 40K offer. Uh, first time we spent like $35,000, we pulled out like 250, we were aiming for like over 300. Then I audited all the sales calls and I was like livid because I was like, this is like the worst selling I've ever seen. This should have been like 400K, 500K plus easy. Like there were people like begging to take 40 grand and they were just like so oblivious to even like, they were just asking them stupid questions, you know what I mean? So <laughs> as long as your sales team is dialed in, it's yeah. a really great system to do. If you have risk that you're, if you don't feel like your sales team are like killers, you carry the risk of fronting all this money, running this challenge, and then just getting thousand dollar deposits, your sales team sucks, and then now you're in the hole. Whereas like on a 5K offer, I could just sell it, and I know that day I made my money. Like there's no like, if the sales team doesn't do a good job, we're screwed. It's like everything they do is extra. I've made my money and I'm super safe because of that. Got it. Does that help?
Thank you. I guess one more question, and then we're, now we're done. Yeah, what cool. uh, finance company do you use to get your clients funded when they're paying you just 15, 20, 30K? Man, everyone's different. Um, I personally uh, like my abundant. Uh, I know Chase, he's the owner. Uh, he does pretty well for us, and he's pretty well connected to our clients. Uh, so he, he does a good job kind of, they own their own bank, whereas pretty much most funding companies use other banks. Yeah. Uh, these guys own their own bank. They only work with certain people. If you want to connect, just let me know. I can throw you in a group chat with him directly, and you guys can kind of hash it okay, out. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Cool. Hopefully that was helpful. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate the energy.